Hello everyone. Welcome to session 7. In this session, I am going to discuss one more problem on dissolution of firm. Take into consideration when capitals are fluctuating as well as on application of Garner versus Murray rule. In my previous session, I have shown you how to prepare the books of accounts under insolvency of a partner by applying the rule of Garner versus Murray. In that problem, only one asset was given and further few adjustments were missing. So in this session, I am going to I am coming out with few more adjustments which will help you to solve the problems. So let us start our discussion with the problem. And I expect you to please make a note of a problem for better understanding. So now I'll read out the problem for you all. Ramu, Bhimu and Shamu were partners in a firm sharing profits and losses in the ratio of 3 is to 2 is to 1. Their balance sheet as on 31-3-2020 were as follows. So you have been given with liabilities and assets. So we have capital balance of, of Ramu and Bhimu. Then we have general reserves given. Accumulated profit is given. Ramu has given loan to the firm. That is Ramu's loan is given. As well as we have creditors. On the asset side you are going to find the machinery, the stock, debtors, cash and the capital account of Shamu is given. So total of balance sheet come down to 50,000 and 50,000. Further, on the above date, the partners decided to dissolve the firm. The assets realized as follows. On the above date, the partners have decided to dissolve their firm and on that date, the at what price the assets have been sold, they are given. So machinery 15,000, stock 16,000, data 4,500 and there is also dissolution expenses. The expenses of dissolution amounted to rupees 500 and further they are giving our details that Shamu became insolvent and he could bring rupees 3000 from his estates. After he becoming insolvent, he is able to bring in only rupees 3000 from his private estate. So prepare the necessary accounts to close the books of the firm. And let's see what to do. So as usual, we need to begin with preparation of realization account. As I told you, we need to transfer all the assets to realization account on the debit side at their book value. So in the problem, we have been given machinery. The book value is 20,000. We have been provided with stock, the book value is 14,000. Detas is there, worth rupees 7,000. It's book value. After transfer of assets, transfer uh, liabilities, we have only one liability, that is creditors, worth rupees 6,000. After this, at what price assets have been sold? So for that, we need to make an entry on the credit side as by cash, that is machinery sold for 15,000, stock sold for 16,000, ditas 4,005. So put together, the total cash which came into the firm is 35,500. 35,500. In the same manner, the liabilities should be paid off. So prior to that, 
as i told you according to the ranking first we need to pay off this dissolution expenses in the previous session in the previous problem what i have discussed in that one no dissolution expenses were there so in this problem they have provided dissolution expenses if there are any dissolution expenses an entry should be made on the debit side of realization account as to cash so in this problem it is 500 rupees since we have written 500 and now need to make a payment of creditors hence the entry is to cash so the creditors no information is provided hence they are paid in full to the 6000 now just make an observation which side is more if you compare the total on the debit side is more it's coming nearly 47500 rupees keep the same total on the credit side 47500 and detect this 6000 as well as 35500 the, the difference what you are going to get is rupees 6000 so this 6000 to be transferred to partners capital i am going to say all partners capital accounts so this 6000 is loss on realization so as we have three partners that is ramu bhimu shamu if you gonna divide this realization loss or to all the three in their profit sharing ratio that is 3 is to 2 is to 1 then Ramu's share will be 3000 Bhimu's share will be 2000 and Shamu's share will be 1000 after realization account as I told you as usual prepare an insolvent partners capital account so in this problem they told it very clearly that Shamu became insolvent and we need to you know, to begin with capital account of Shamu. So begin with two balance brought down because Shamu's capital account is showing a debit balance. Hence, we have started with two balance brought down, which is 8,000. After that, in the adjustment, they said that Ramu, Shamu is able to bring only 3,000 from his private estate. Hence, an entry has been made on the credit side as by cash. That is, 3000 rupees after this if there are any accumulated profits in the balance sheet shamu's share need to be given so we have profit and loss account on the liability side that is accumulated profit so 9000 is given out of 9000 shamu's share is 1 by 6 hence it is 1500 after that we have also been given general resource worth rupees 3000 so shamu's share is one sixth so rupees 500 and not to forget just now we have prepared realization account so in that realization account we got realization loss in that shamu's share of realization loss is 1000 rupees after transferring all the entries now we need to compare which side is more so total on the debit side is coming 9000 on the credit side it is hardly 5000 so now a difference of 4000 so this 4000 is considered as capital deficiency so this capital deficiency should be borne by the solvent partner since I have written on the uh, written as by solvent partners capital account so who are solvent then Ramu and Bhimu I have written at the bottom then how this capital deficiency should be appropriated among Ramu and Bhimu based on capital ratio then before moving further what we need to do is we need to calculate a capital ratio so as usual as I have dealt in the last session in the same manner we need to begin with the capital balances of Ramu and Bhimu so 14,000 and 16,000 to which if there are any accumulated reserves profits to be added if there is an accumulated loss 
then it should be deducted. In the previous problem, there was an accumulated loss. Hence, we deducted. In this problem, we have general reserves as well as accumulated profits. These should be added. So now, general reserves 3000. In that, Ramu's share is 3 by 6 and Bhimu's share is 2 by 6. As well as profit and loss is given. In this, Ramu's share is 3 by 6 and Bhimu's share is 2 by 6. So if you add these amounts to Ramu and Bhimu's capital, then their capital balances will stand as on to the date of dissolution is 20,000, 20,000. Now, the capital deficiency of insolvent partners should be borne by solvent partners in this ratio that is 1 is to 1. Hence, I will show you once again on the top that is while preparing insolvent partners capital account. Here, I have written 1 by 2, 1 by 2. How we got this? We got out of the working note. So now, after this calculation, now we need to prepare solvent partners capital account. So who are solvents? Ramu and Bhim. So now, as usual, begin with by balance brought down because these two people's balance is capital account is showing credit balance. Hence, we have started with the credit side. By balance brought down 14,000 and 16,000. After that, realization loss is there. So, transfer the, their share of realization loss, 3,000, 2,000. And remember, I told you, the rules of Garner versus Smur. If there is a loss on realization, the solvent partners have to bring in the cash equal to their share of realization loss. Hence, look at this one. On the debit side, we have transferred the realization loss. Immediately on the credit side, we have shown cash brought in by the partners. So why this should be done? It should be done because of the decisions given under Garner versus Murray. So after this, look at the balance sheet. If there are any accumulated profits or reserves, those should be transferred. We have general you know, reserves given as well as profit and loss given. So their respective share to be transferred and in this insolvent partners capital account on the credit side you have written that is capital deficiency of 4000 it is on the credit side it should be transferred to solvent partners account on the debit side. So hence an entry is made here that is to Shamu's account. That is the capital deficiency of an insolvent partners should be borne by solvent partners. Solvent partners are Ramu and Bimu. Friends, hope uh, you are understanding. So this is how the rules of Garner versus Murray are applied while dissolution of firm. So after this, now we need to make all the entries have been completed. Now we need to take a total. If you take the total on the credit side, it is 23,000 and 22,000. So keep the same total on debit side 23,000 and 22,000. If you deduct the debit side items, that is 3,000 and 2,000, the difference what you are going to get is to be written as to cash or bank account. This is for the final settlement. So capital accounts are going to be settled. After preparation of this account, a very small account we need to prepare that is cash. So in this, uh, in this account, we need to begin with two balance brought down as we have a cash balance of rupees 1000. And now it's very simple. Your duty is only to go through the previous accounts prepared wherever you are finding it out, the cash account, 
So transfer all those entries to this cash account. And remember, we have one item extra in the balance sheet that is Ramu's loan. So Ramu has given us a loan. So hence, he should be paid. So hence, I have written at the last entry in the cash account on credit side, you can find it by Ramu's loan account. So this is the loan of Ramu is paid. So only thing is, Please mention the cash available and the next thing is just look at the previous accounts prepared wherever you have the cash account on the debit side transfer all those accounts on the credit side of cash account and wherever you have a cash account on the credit side please bring all those entries on the debit side of cash account. So once if you do it our cash account must tally. So in this problem, the cash account totally showing 44,500 and 44,500 on both the side. So this is how we're going to close the books of the firm. With this, uh, I'm going to conclude for this session. In case any doubt, I have, uh, um, I got to mention in the description, I'm mentioning my email ID. You can post your query there. So I'm going to respond to you all. So thank you.